Welcome back. Let's continue with... What were we talking about? The Legend of the Gold? I see. So, in other words, this witch lent Grandfather the funds necessary to revive the Ushiromiya family, and he owed her big time. And then, he felt so grateful that he had that huge painting drawn and displayed. Alright, just fixing my volume? Yeah, it's not that crazy a story. It's even possible this person was an old granny who looked like a witch. That's a bit rude. Maybe grandfather idolized her, and that's why he had her drawn to look so beautiful. Ha 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 ha. I bet if we ever did meet this person, she wouldn't be nearly this pretty. Hmm, I wonder if those are famous last words. Ha 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 ha, that's possible. The name Beatrice certainly s the name Beatrice sounds pretty Western, and if you think about how everyone in our family has Western names, maybe even the name Beatrice is the result of grandfather trying to rearrange some Japanese person's name to make it sound Western. Ooh. What would a Japanese name be then? I get it, I get it. That means this pretty girl doesn't exist outside the picture. Guess that means I won't be able to- oh god. In the first place, isn't having a witch pretty bizarre by itself? Like, you could find something like that anywhere on earth. I laughed and made fun of the witch, trying to distinguish myself from the kid I was six years ago, who feared the witch of the forest, when Maria tugged on my sleeve. I could tell by how hard she pulled, that she was a bit upset. Hmm? What is it, Maria? Ooh. Ooh. Beatrice exists. Maria stared up at me. She had on her usual sour look, but I could tell she was angry by the color of her eyes. Wait, what? This this is like that men writing women subreddit. How on earth can you tell she's angry by the color of her eyes? Sure. Why not? Witches exist. Witches exist. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, sure, they do exist. If you turn the TV on and watch anime or something. Exist. Witches exist. Is Maria a witch? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I started getting impatient, not knowing why Maria was jumping on me like this. Then, Jessica tapped me on the shoulder and whispered. Dumbass, you're smashing a kid's dream. Maria really believes things like witches and Beatrice exist. Come to think of it, Maria-chan, in social studies at your school, when you were asked to write what you wanted to be when you grew up, you wrote a witch, didn't you? That's a lofty dream. Maria nodded seriously. Tears started to run from the corners of her eyes. I see. To a girl who wants to become a witch in the future, the existence of Beatrice was proof that witches do exist in this world and was therefore an image that she yearned after and admired. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Exist. Exist. Witches exist. <laughs> but Batla still doesn't believe. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's okay. Witches do exist. I believe it. George Anarchy kneeled down and hugged Maria's head. Watching this, Jessica poked my side. So that's what it is. It's like shouting that Santa Claus doesn't exist in front of a child who believes in him on Christmas Eve. I'm not the kind of guy who likes to shatter kids' dreams. You sure about that, Battler? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to make fun of your dreams, so I apologize. Beatrice does exist. Even now, She's living in the forest and comes to the mansion every night to peek in and see what everyone's doing. 
so you shouldn't go into the forest. At night, you mustn't stare into the dark forest. You might be seen by the witch of the forest, Beatrice. Take a shot every time someone says forest. After all, grandmother said so. Ew. Really? Battler really believes? Yep, I believe. Sorry for doubting it. Come on, let's make up. I stuck out my hand. Maria grabbed it with her tiny hand, and we made up. Maria didn't grumble any more than that, so George Anarchy and Jessica were relieved. Oh, so this is where all of you were. I was sure you had just left to go to the beach. Shannon-chan, carrying a basket, was surprised to find us all gathered in front of the portrait. Ah, Shannon! Well, this is the first time Battler has seen Beatrice's portrait. He was just fascinated by it. That's right, it certainly is fascinating. Beatrice Summer is truly beautiful. I am sure that she captivated the master. Yes, indeed. <laughs> In addition to the patron theory, there's also a theory that she was grandfather's first love. Either way, although it's been several decades since he met her, even now she holds a special place in his heart. Which must mean that he's still captivated by her. Sheesh. That must have made grandmother pretty jealous, huh? I'm not really sure, but that might actually be true. Apparently, grandmother believed he was cheating on her with some blonde. Ooh. Good smell. Good smell coming from Shannon. Why is everybody creepy? Maria, sniffing, approached the basket Shannon-chan was holding with interest. After hearing that, I noticed a fragrant scent with a touch of vanilla. Ah, I apologize. I was told by Kumasawa-san to bring them to everyone. What is it, I wonder? Oh, excellent. Cookies. I want some vanilla cookies. Ooh. Wanna eat cookies. Wanna eat cookies. Ooh. Please, eat as much as you would like. Is that a challenge? But, um... Would it be appropriate to serve cookies in a place like this? In front of the portrait? Shannon-chan sent us a glance that seemed to ask what we wanted to do about it. Well, yeah, guess eating here would be bad manners, generally speaking. Maria, why don't we eat someplace else? Let's put the cookies in a bento and have a picnic. Ooh, have a picnic, have a picnic. If we can eat cookies, let's go. Yeah, let's go get some fresh air. We shouldn't stuff ourselves right in front of the witch. That's right. Didn't we say we wanted to go down to the beach in the first place? Let's go, let's go. Shannon-chan, sorry, but could I ask you to get us a blanket to sit on and some flasks of tea? Right, certainly. Whoosh. Shannon-chan received her instructions and gracefully bowed before retracing her steps. We headed for the beach on our own. Everyone headed for the entrance in a group. Feeling as though that witch was staring down at our backs, I turned around once more. Ew, Batla, you still don't believe? Nope, I believe. It'd be so much cooler that way. The golden witch Beatrice gave Grandfather ten tons of gold. And that gold might be sleeping around here somewhere. Besides, didn't Grandfather write that strange epitaph as though challenging us to find it if we can? I'd say that kind of adventurous story is way better. Adventurous. Adventurous. Is that spelled right? 20 billion yen worth of gold, huh? Heh <laughs> heh. Even if we split it up between the four of us, that's still a ridiculous amount of money. 
5 billion yen for each of us. Yes, please. Incredible. With that kind of money, you could probably make any sort of business prosper. In fact, we could live our whole lives fabulously without working at all. You think? Ooh, ooh. I don't want 5 billion yen. I want cookies. Cookies. Yes, priorities. Wahahaha, <laughs> Maria would take cookies over money. Still, 5 billion yen. That's like a dream. Ah, I thought we were going to the beach. Ridiculous. Is it possible that you all truly believe in father's legend of the gold? I wanted to go to the beach. Of course we don't believe that story about a witch giving him gold. But there's no mistake about the gold itself. The fact that father obtained gold bars from an unknown source has been confirmed in several ways. Ooh. We've heard that before the president of the, what's that, Ma Marusu company died, father showed him a large pile of gold somewhere. Father used that man's claim as proof that there were 10 tons worth. Maybe he just lied. That's just the nonsense of a senile old man. Along with father, he was just fabricating a story. You can't take it seriously. If that gold didn't exist, he wouldn't have been able to gather so much funding. Before the president died, he was a person with such a sincere personality that he earned the respect of many in the business world. He wouldn't have become a partner to such fraud. Aniki, the president of Marusu definitely saw it. Ten tons of it, clearly with his own eyes. Even more, dad let the president take one ingot at random and have it examined. The results of the examination showed that the 10 kilogram ingot was 99.99% pure. He said that the Ushiromiya family crest, the one winged eagle, was imprinted on it. Almost instantly, the Ushiromiya legend of the gold spread amongst the fixers of the business world. Gold from an unknown foundry has a poor rate of conversion into money. Thinking that it was a chance for decisive profits, they accepted it as collateral. And as a result, father was able to receive massive loans. Is there no limit to the absurdity you're willing to accept? How old are you people? Are you still taking that nursery tale you heard as children seriously? Where is the proof that this 10, ton of, 10 tons of gold even exists? Aren't you just parroting the lies of father and few of those close to him? Of course it's just a story, but still, Aniki, the amount of money Dad raised required a suitable amount of collateral. Even if the gold itself was just a rumour, it's an undoubtable fact that he showed them a treasure of comparable worth. It was just an illusion of money created by our penniless father. He acted as though he actually had gold that didn't exist, fooling his sponsors. It was probably the gamble of a lifetime. Luckily, his use of those funds proved successful. If the Korean war demands hadn't come and the Ushiromiya family had not been restored, father would probably have been hounded after as the crook of the century. So are you saying the gold never existed and father made it all up? Of course. And because of that, the illusion of gold became a mere inconvenience once he'd achieved enough success. That's why, later on, father added all that about a witch and black magic, weakening the credibility of the entire story. In other words, he revealed that the illusion of the gold was a fabrication. If he claimed to have received the gold from a witch, no one would believe that it existed at all, right? It's also possible he said it for all of your sakes. Nevertheless, here comes some stupid offspring wanting to divide up this non-existent gold, along with the rest of the inheritance. Rosa, don't tell me that even you believe in a fabrication like this. I can't prove whether or not father really had the gold. I just want to claim my rightful share as one of father's four children. 
Ho! Oh. It seems even you have started to talk that way, Rosa. I see. So that's what you're all getting at. You're trying to claim that I'm attempting to keep all the gold for myself. Nisan, you've gathered a massive supply of funds. That's a fact. If we rule out the possibility that you've been embezzling father's personal funds, then there's only one possibility left, right? Aniki, we've been thinking that you might have found those 10 tons of gold bars. Ridiculous. Such a thing never existed in the first place. Then explain yourself. Was it embezzlement of father's assets or father's hidden gold? How could you have gathered so much funding if not by one of these methods? Even I have many friends in the political and financial realms. I have earned their cooperation, nothing more. And on that matter, I have no responsibility to explain myself to you. You understand, don't you? There are some topics that ought not be spoken of. If you insist on that point, that's all well and good for now. But Aniki, Dad doesn't have long. Nobody can ensure that he'll live to see this day next year. The inheritance process will begin at the instant of Dad's death. We'll arrange for lawyers and accountants who are impartial to all of us and have them inspect Dad's financial situation. I hope it turns out that all he owns is like a single book. At that time, if it comes to light that you've unjustly interfered with father's money, you understand, right? I don't have a clue what you're talking about. You're starting to make me feel as indignant as my wife was. Ho! Oh. Of course, father's gold is part of father's fortune. We understand it's money you can't reveal openly, but the four siblings should have an equal right to it. In other words, you're going to have your financial situation investigated as well as dad's to determine whether you're hoarding the gold or not. Isn't this a great opportunity? Right now, prove the existence of your so-called support from friends and acquaintances. That way, we can sportingly apologize for foolishly doubting you. Right, Rosa? That's right. Kraus Nissan, you are the one who's dodging the issue. If you were guiltless, you could just prove that you were in the right, but you aren't even trying to do so. However, Aniki, we still have to consider your position here. As Dad's representative, you're probably bearing a larger share of the burden than we are. We've been living terribly relaxed lives until now, so it wouldn't be fair for the rest of us to complain without taking your efforts into account. Ho! Oh, it seems you cannot make up your mind whether to flatter me or slander me. Please get to the point. Basically, randomly investigating nitpicky aspects of father's wealth seems like a pretty crude way to go about it. As you said, Kraus Nissan, there may have been movements of money that are difficult to explain. We've come to consult with you today while fully aware of that point. Both sides stand to gain from talking about this now. A consultation? Ho! Oh. When the inheritance is divided, you'll be rewarded for your years of hard work taking care of Dad by an agreement that's generous in your favor. Don't misunderstand us, Nissan. We aren't saying that we'll abandon our rights. But when we make our claim for what we deserve, we might as well offer a generous understanding for your position. That's what we mean. In other words, if you accept our conditions, then when the inheritance is divided, we'll leave the investigation of father's financial situation to you, Kraus Nissan. Ho, oh, the blackmail begins. All of the siblings from ever downward suspected that Kraus was trying to steal their father's wealth. So, letting Kraus report the state of that wealth was extremely contradictory and a huge concession. If, as they claimed, Kraus was actually embezzling money, Kraus would be able to hide that fact. 
Besides which, it'd be possible for him to control the distribution of the inheritance in a manner favourable to himself. Krauss, realising that this sounded too good to be true, couldn't help but feel suspicious. He couldn't help but worry about what they'd ask for in exchange. Ho! Oh. After mistrusting me completely, you now say that you're willing to restore your confidence in me as the eldest sibling? So, what is it you want in return? Just what we deserve as siblings. You aren't the kind of person who'd steal Dad's property. But you also aren't being financed by some patron. Considering all that, there is a certain explanation that'd satisfy the rest of us. Nissan, you found 10 tons of gold and used that as collateral to gather some funding. Yes, just like father did in the past, right? If that's the case, there won't be any funny business in father's finances. You've always been a good son, looking after the father. Why do we mistrust a person like that? You're being so roundabout, I can barely understand you. Please speak in clearer and more practical terms. Our first condition. Anaki, you must admit that you found Dad's gold. Are you asking me to admit I possess gold that doesn't exist? Our second condition. You'll acknowledge that each sibling has a right to a share of the gold, and you will pay out those shares. How foolish! With that non-existent 20 billion yen of gold, that would be 5 billion yen per person. Are you telling me to pay a total of 15 billion yen? Ridiculous. Keep listening to the end. We know that much money can't just pop out of nowhere. We're not asking you to make an impossible deal. Of course, regarding the portions of the gold, we plan to reward plenty for your hard work until now. Our third condition, the portion of the gold to the one bearing the title of successor to the Ushiromiya head family will be 50%. The remainder will be considered the fair share of the siblings and divided up. Of course, this also includes you, Kraus Nisan. Of the 20 billion, 12.5 billion will go to Aniki. 2.5 billion will go to Eva Nesan. 2.5 billion will go to me, and 2.5 will go to Rosa. That division scheme makes me so grateful I could cry. So you're saying, for the sake of the gold that doesn't exist, I must pay you 7.5 billion yen. What's wrong? Nisan, your share is five times the size of ours. These are such good terms, I'd be jumping for joy. <laughs> Our fourth condition. The gold will be liquidated and distributed along with the inheritance at the time of father's death. However, as a deposit, 10% of our portions are to be paid to us promptly. These payments must be made before March of next year. What do you think, Kraus Nissan? This is an ideal chance for you to restore the trust regarding your handling of father's assets, isn't it? Of course, it might be impossible to get a whole 7.5 billion before father dies, but it should be possible for you to manage a deposit of 750 million, right? Yeah sure, I'll just whip that out of my wallet. Paying 700 million in half a year might sound like a pain, but you should be able to manage it. What with all your friends in the political and business spheres? Normally, we'd hope to receive the 7.5 billion right now, all at once. But out of concern for you, we'll show our sincerity by asking for only 10% of that for the time being. The remaining 90% can wait until the inheritance is distributed. See? Even you'd be capable of managing a mere 10% to show your sincerity. So, you're trying to sell me the right to assess father's financial situation for 750 million yen. Heh, heh, heh. How impressive. 
You all certainly have grown. To think that I'm now the one being offered deals. Nissan, if you accept these terms, the rest of us siblings will leave the investigation of father's assets to you. However, the results of that investigation will be sub subject to scrutiny. It's only natural, right? We'd be so sad if you managed things that... We'd be so sad if you managed things so that our 7.5 billion share shrank. We'll avoid complaining as a general rule. Just make sure you do it neat and tidy. As long as you don't try anything that's blatantly obvious, we've got no intention of stirring things up. We want our inheritance quickly too. We don't want it to get all drawn out and left hanging. If a complaint is made, who would carry out the follow-up investigation? We don't mind if it's you. This is probably the first and last chance for us siblings to reach a consensus. I believe it won't come to that. Hehe, <laughs> cackle cackle. Looks like even you can speak up now and then, Rosa. By this point, it's obvious that Kraus wasn't at all trusted as the oldest sibling, so there's no need to go into detail. The formerly tyrannical oldest brother had always abused his privileges and violated the other sibling's shares. It was in response to this that the other three, now adults, were finally teaming up and striking back for the first time. Sorry, but there's more. Our fifth condition. This decision must take precedence over father's will. Later on, we don't want some will to appear and make this decision completely irrelevant. I see that you're very cautious. Then let me ask, if the gold really were found, what would you do? Since you'll be making payments to us for what the gold's worth, the rest of us, really, don't care if we ever see the gold or not. You can think of our share as an advance payment. Giggle, it's good to have dreams, isn't it? You plan to turn this island into a resort, right? You might stumble upon the gold by chance during construction. Eva let out a high-pitched laugh. Kraus watched, but didn't even flinch. Let me add a seventh condition before I accept. In the situation that any sibling other than myself finds the gold, they will immediately turn it over to me. Yes, yes, of course. We'll hold on to it for you. Giggle. Yeah, that seems serious. It was a play on words. Of course, the others, who were forcing Kraus to pay money for some non-existent gold, wouldn't save Kraus his portion if they actually found it. From the beginning, this deal had been nothing more than a threat directed at Kraus. You're not saying. Regardless of the actual facts, it was still extremely likely that Kraus was embezzling his father's assets. When Kinzo faced death at last and had his inheritance distributed, some unpleasant facts would surely come to light. That could easily become fatal to Kraus. The others had spotted this weak point and were threatening their brother under the veil of compromise, trying to wring a huge sum of money out of him. With family like these, whew. However, they had forgotten one thing. They'd forgotten that their brother's brain moved so swiftly, at least when it came to cunning and guile, that they'd been forced to band together to combat him. While Eva couldn't stop smiling, sure of her victory, Kraus let out a gl gloating laugh to show how relaxed he was. Ha ha ha. This all makes for such a touching story. My estrangement you from you all has left a deep pain in my heart. If accepting these conditions means we siblings can become friends again, it would please me to no end. I'd be happy to agree to your deal. Rejoice, Rosa. We have reached an understanding. Dot dot dot. 
Rosa's expression dimmed. It was never a good sign when her brother started talking like this. <laughs> Eva also keenly picked up on this. That's why she was unable to wipe away a sense of unease, even though Krauss had obediently accepted the deal. My, how obedient of you. It's not like you at all, Nissan. What a cruel thing to say. Are you implying I have some ulterior motive? Of course I don't. I'm just the same as all of you. Just the same as all of you. He seemed to emphasize just that one part. The color of Rudolph's face darkened. To him, it sounded as though Krauss was saying, I have a plan similar to yours. So Rudolph panicked. He rushed to bring this nearly resolved discussion to a conclusion. Then we're good. So, Anarchy, would you mind signing here? This is a written contract summarizing the discussion we've just been having. There's one for each of us. Everyone will sign for the same contents. Rudolf took four written contracts out of his breast pocket that had the details of their deal written on them. His breast pocket? How big is his pocket? The seventh condition you proposed will, of course, be added right now. Don't worry about that. Anarchy, need a pen? Rudolph took a fountain pen out of his breast pocket. It's like the depths of the abyss in that pocket. And offers it, offered it to Krauss. Krauss made as if to accept, but then, with a small laugh, he drew back his hand without taking it and spoke. Actually, in order to ensure that this agreement is properly executed, I'd like to propose an amendment on just one point. As soon as Krauss said that single sentence, all of the siblings felt as though something ominous was creeping up their backs at the same time. Th that won't do. We've already decided, haven't we? Just stay quiet and sign it. Why are you in such a hurry, Eva? Of course I'll sign. I promise the share of the gold going to all of you will be 7.5 billion yen. I also promise that when father's inheritance is distributed, I will cleanly and neatly liquidate it. However, there is one point that I simply must insist that you compromise on. What are you talking about? What don't you like? The part about promptly paying 10% of your share, 750 million yen. As you pointed out, my financial situation is far from prosperous. While I can guarantee that I will collect on various future investments, I must admit that I am quite poor at the present moment. Same. In short, I have absolutely no money that I can move around right now. I am incompetent, and my business sense is dull. Since I am the loser you all claim me to be, I don't have the power to move 750 million yen in just half a year. Th that can't be true. Are you trying to deceive us with such a half-baked trick? At the time of the division of the inheritance, I will liquidate everything at once. Remove the condition that I must pay you 10% in advance. That is the only condition under which I am willing to sign. Kraus Nissan, that 10% is nothing more than a number to measure your sincerity, isn't it? All things being equal, you shouldn't have any room to negotiate at all. We're doing you a huge favor by offering to let things slide for just 10% in good faith money. Now that we've explained that, you rejecting our offer would seriously damage our trust and relationship, right? Hideyoshi had a humble expression on his face and was rubbing his hands together. But his eyes weren't calm at all. Krauss had already seen through to the shadow in the depths of those eyes. Humph. Why are you all in such a rush? Or could it be that you're afraid of something? Rosa, won't you tell me alone? Secretly, so the rest of the siblings can't hear. It's not as though I... 
All right, we're going to end this episode here and we're going to find out what the secret is in the next one. See ya.